So I've got a uh, wheel motor here. So it's a wheel with a motor and a feedback. It's a uh, incremental encoder with pawls. This motor is actually a 14 pole brushless motor and there's a gear nine to one. That seems to be pretty typical. Um, like a, maybe a polyurethane kind of material, uh, probably a loaf uh, uh, slip or loaf, uh, you know, low uh, slipping on, on concrete. So it's uh, sort of designed for like a AGV. Um, so uh, I, I don't have the easy board yet, uh, but the Nano seems to be pretty good size. Um, it's like a five amp motor. And there's a small five amp nano, although this the nanos could do uh, 35 amps continuous, so much much bigger motor. Uh, and also we have the donut, easy to uh, connect to. Um, it has a two board design, and so maybe a little more cost efficient. And this will deliver 70 amps, so uh, 14 peak or 15. 15, 7.5 and 15 peak for that guy. I'm just going to test it with the uh, the BDL. <clears throat> so uh, the the, uh, the motor itself could go like 3,000 RPM. Maybe it's rated for less. Um, the motor and then the nine to one gear, so slur at the output. I, the idea is to go about two meters a second when you get the vehicle up and running, <clears throat> and uh, the torque required, you know, one to two newton meters and then times nine for the gear. Uh, so this is for a small, smaller AGV. Um, I'll see if I have time, I'll take a look at some formulas for that. But uh, just to go through the basic setup here, uh, brushless rotary, no brake on this one. Some have brakes, incremental with hauls. 8192 with an index counts per rev at the motor, right? So times nine at the output. Uh, you can come to a controlled stop. If you had a brake, you could, uh, I always like to put a value there for velocity. If you had a brake, you can come to a controlled stop and then turn the brake on so you don't slide downhill. Um, can't open or eat the cat or cereal or pulse and direction or voltage, you know, whatever you like. Um, and then uh, the motor data here, it's an electric craft, PW52, 648, so 48 volt motor. Um, 14 poles, uh, resistance and inductance was good from their data sheet. I put in a theoretical top speed based on 48 volts and about 12 volts per kRPM. You'll never be able to hit that fast based on your current times your resistance, right? Um, but, you know, you can, you can go the rated speed, that's no problem. So the current is in uh, amps peak, so 5.63 amps peak, so less amps RMS, but twice that approximately for acceleration, uh, we can do that for a second or for 10 seconds or not sure how long that is for this motor. So maybe it's five seconds. Uh, just be careful not to burn up your motor if you increase the time. The drive, of course, could do 30 amps, 15 amps forever. So not a problem. Uh, typically about a, a, a kilohertz of current loop bandwidth, even for a 14 pole motor, not going wicked fast, um, should be fine. And the uh, absolute theoretical maximum speed, that's just like for safety. You could lower it. Um, you're not going to go more than 3,000 anyways. I turn the integrator off. Uh, so if my largest uh, mass is large or small, I don't get any wind up. And we're relying on the stiffness in the position loop um, to get us, uh, you know, large inertia mismatch. You might want to dial that down from 1,000 to a hundred, um, maybe less, depending on how big your mass is. But you know, maybe this isn't designed for like, you know, a thousand kilograms. You know, maybe a hundred kilograms. And um, we'll take a look at that too. So just to give you a basic idea, uh, tools, manual phasing. You know, there's a there's a lot of electrical cycles in here. Seven electrical cycles uh, would be one rev of the motor, and then you'd see. Um, you can see it goes slow at the output because of the nine to one gear ratio. So I've turned uh, about halfway around, uh, closer to 4096, so you could zero it and spin it seven times uh, 
two is uh, 14 electrical cycles. And I got some phasing here. I don't know, I had to invert the V hall to get it to come up all different, you know, you can't have all low or all high, that's an illegal state, but uh, we worked around that. So when you go forward, counts go up, you can determine which way is forward, then phase it, then invert the feedback if you have to make counts go up when you go forward. Um, so real quick, uh, you know, tune the current loop, uh, tune the velocity loop, and uh, I'm just doing a profile here. So nine times 8192 is 37728 times 10 would be you know 10 revs. So just for fun, we'll turn more than one time. So there it goes. Enabled the drive, um, made a spin, and uh, so with with the drive, yeah. You see. Turn the shaft a little, little coggy, but not bad. Um, I don't, I don't see any cog when I'm spinning, so there's some inertia there, you know, maybe for slow. But you know, zero speed plus or minus a count while it's moving, plus or minus a few counts. Uh, there's no interval, so you get a little bit of lag on that, but it still follows the profile within, you know, 30 counts, and then move and settle. Um, this only took about uh, less than half an amp. Um, and again, uh, this motor, 48 volt motor, 12 volts per kilo RPM could hit close to uh, three or 4,000. 3,000 I think is the rated, but uh, the current five, uh, 5.6. So volts and amps, that's speed and torque. And so we can use that to calculate the continuous watts. And of course, twice that for peak watts. Uh, used for acceleration. So let's take a look at some specification for this. Uh, 14 pole, 6.1 newton meters at output, 12.4 newton meters peak. They have various windings, uh, 48 and a 24 volt uh, gear ratio, 9 to 1. Maybe they're anticipating options. Um, there's some mounting brackets here, or mounting holes for, for a bracket. Um, the feedback connector is, is like a Hiroshi, it sort of pops in. It, that wasn't positive locking. Uh, good speed torque curves uh, showing at the output. You know, you got your peak torque, and then you're continuous, and there's a voltage limit right there. And continuous power, so you, you know, when you get moving, you get some real power out of it. So um, power is just speed and torque. Um, so 2448, I got this one here. And uh, you can see the continuous stall current, 5.6 amps. And uh, I, well, maybe that is uh, continuous, not RMS. And anyways, you got your Newton meters, Newtons, Newtons of stall. So Newton divided by amps is Newton meters per amp, which is equal to volts per radians per second, which converts to volts per kRPM. So we are able to enter the data for the motor. Uh, this this um, continuous wheel speed is at the output, so times nine to get back to the motor. And uh, oh yeah, here's an interesting one. Maximum radial uh, and axial load uh, kilograms, 22, like going into the shaft and then 68 for loading. Um, yeah, you probably don't want to put all the load on the wheels to go to the bearing. So maybe there's some casters or two wheels or four wheels to get your, so you can get your mass up. Um, I'm going to leave that to the, uh, the physics guys. Um, but I did want to talk a moment about some formulas. So uh, the, the, the question was, Hey, uh, how big does my motor have to be if I have uh, a thousand kilograms and I want to go two meters a second? And so that's, you know, a typical question from someone building an AGV. And so I'm just using this uh, kinetic energy, you know, to go from zero to whatever speed, some mass, 
Um, that's, you know, doesn't include all the inefficiencies or the, the weight of the vehicle itself. Um, but let's take a look at it. Uh, 1,000 kilograms times two meters per second squared is 4,000 joules. If you gave yourself 10 seconds to get up to 4,000, that's 400 watts or, you know, joules divided by 10. Um, so 400 watts. Okay, so uh, this is like a 200 watt motor, so maybe two of those. Uh, power supply would be 48 times 10, uh, 480 watts. So I got 80 watts of headroom for, you know, whatever, uh, IR drop or drive watts, a little extra. Now, the, to go at that speed, you got a 51 millimeter diameter, and you're going to multiply that by pi, and so that works out about 4.2 revs per second at the output of the gear. So how much is that in RPM back to the motor? So 4.2 divided times 60 seconds per minute times 9, 2,268 RPM. For a motor that can do 2,268 RPM, how much torque do you need? Well, watts is newton meters times radians per second, so speed times torque. Flip it around, uh, you can multiply your RPM by 0.1047, and then uh, take your 400 watts, divide that. You need 1.68 newton meters, and there's a gear, and there's other inefficiencies, so I'm going to say 80% efficiency of everything. Not, not that I know, maybe it is more or less, depending. 2.1 newton meters for 10 seconds, say two newton meters uh, uh, for 10 seconds. So if a wheel motor is rated for one newton meter, we should use a two. All right, so how many wheels do you have on your vehicle? Uh, looks like this guy's rated for 0.69 newton meters continuously. So I don't know how long we can do uh, the one newton meter, but if we could do that for a longer period of time, uh, you know, up to 10 seconds maybe, then, and the other problem, of course, is, you know, two wheels has got to hold up five, a thousand kilograms. There must be something else holding the mass up, so some, some casters or something. Um, but yeah, this size of the motor looks like, I don't know, a couple of seconds, three, four seconds at this. It's only twice the continuous, so these brushless motors are usually three, four, five times more for a very short period. But they probably got calculated in here, like someone might want to accelerate for five to ten seconds. So that would be interesting. Uh, don't want to burn up the motor. Uh, but at the same time, you know, heat up the motor and make sure it works. Uh, maybe less mass. This Maybe this vehicle is more like, you know, 100, kilog 100 kilogram. Um, that's still a lot of pounds. Um, yeah, so yeah, there's the radial force and then there's the axial. And together they kind of add up, you know, if things shift from one side to the other, there's still some axial forces going on. So 100 kilograms to LBS, and that's 200. Yeah, it's like uh, moving a moving a person around. Or, but so you know, good two wheels. Uh, you can spin them in different directions to turn, spin them together to share the load. Um, four wheels. You could do some maybe some other clever stuff, but I think this is kind of like a typical two wheel motor design. Um, there's no steering mechanism on this, so you could have one wheel and a steering mechanism, um, or two wheels to come up with your own, like turn this way, turn that way. Um, so anyways, uh, AGV wheel type motor, uh, different drives, a little bit of application calculation. Thanks for watching.